Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to work with the WCF, Windows Communication Foundation, and do caching at the same time. So WCF is sometimes referred to as REST services on an ASP.NET application in um, Visual Studio. So just a quick reminder of what caching is all about. It's a system to improve the performance of an application. And so you don't have to go back to the data source every time that you want to get the data. Sometimes it's at hand in a closer place called the data cache. So before we get programming, I want to show you where we are at the present time. So in a previous tutorial, we created a REST service. And so you can see that the service says, I want to get the user ID and number two. So if I put in a number three and press enter, I get a different person. Also, I had another endpoint called get all users, and this one shows everybody in my database. So we're going to use this service with caching, and we'll test it out with some breakpoints to prove that it actually works. So in case you missed the previous video, we created a service called user service here. And we created a list of what's a kind of a fake database. We have some people, and they're all from the Flintstones, and then we had these services called uh, get all users and the other services were get user by ID and get user by username and so these are the services that uh, I'll leave in a link if you haven't created these yet you'll need to go back and do this first now we're going to need some instructions so I'm going to the Microsoft documentation called caching support for WCF which is exactly what we're trying to do so there's a few things that we're going to have to change specifically in our application config file. And so you can see we've got a list of things that we have to copy and paste here. So let's go see where this would fit in our application. So I'm back to the uh, Visual Studio app here and I'm going into web config. Let's see what's going on in there. So we've got ourselves a web config file here. Now, I don't know if you've got all of these settings exactly as I do. Hopefully you do if you completed the previous tutorial. But if not, you can browse through here and pause the video. So let's switch back to the Microsoft web page to see which things we have to copy. So I am looking at this uh, area called System Web and Caching. So let's just copy what we've got here. And we're going to make one small modification. So now I'm back here in the web config file and I'm going to go to the system web area and just paste in the caching. So this part right here is new. So what did we just add? Well, we added caching. There's output cache settings as a section and then there's an area called a profile. And so the profile actually has a name and the name, what they recommended was called something like cache for 60 seconds. You can name this anything you want, but it, you have to remember what it is and refer it into your code. So the duration of our cache is going to last for 60 seconds. That means that it will automatically refresh the data directly from the data source after a minute passes. Vary by param, we'll leave it none, and then the SQL dependency. Now, if you had a database, this would be important. In our application that we created, there is not a database, so I'm going to delete that part. All right, so I'm going to need this name here, so I might as well copy it now. So I'm going to copy. Okay, so let's return to the uh, documentation, and I'm going to scroll up a little bit until I come to a little bit of code here. So this here is one of the endpoints. It's called uh, get customer, is their example. And you can see that their uh, tag here at the beginning, this descriptor, is showing that we have ASP net cache profile. So that is exactly what we put in our XML file. And they have the same name here called cache for 60 seconds. So since we're using the same example as they have here, I'm going to copy this. Now, where would I put that in my code? It's not in the XML file, but it's over here in the user services area. Actually, it's the iService1. And you can see exactly where it's going to go now. So this file here is the uh, interface that defines all the things that are in the service. So where was get all users? That's this one right here. So I'm just going to put in a blank line and then paste in the code that I took from the documentation. So we have a 60 second cache running now. 
Okay, so we've uh, done two things. We've done ourselves a web config, or we've added this profile, and then we've uh, defined it here as 60 seconds, and then we've put it into our interface. Let's see if this program still works. I'm going to run the program. Okay, it looks like the service is up and running. By the way, I'm going to stop here. If you've got something else besides your web browser, let me show you a, a workaround so that you can get rid of this test client if it's the test client's in your way. So I'm going back to my project file here. This is the uh, actual uh, source code where I've created my uh, project. And I'm looking for user service project user. I'm going to edit that. So let's do a right click on it and choose open with. And I'm going to choose Notepad as my program. And let's see, I don't know if I always want to do that, but I'll open it with Notepad. So I have added a section in this page here called Enable C, uh, WCF Test Client for SVC. And I've set it to false. So if you don't have that, you may be getting un, unpredictable results. So if you just want to copy and paste this into Google and find out more information, uh, you can avoid some some frustrating issues. Anyway, I'm going to close this down. Uh, I've already done this, and let's uh, come back to our service. So if you got your service up and running, that's great. Now let's go to our uh, get user by ID 2. Let's see, that seems to work, just like we did in the previous. Let's go to get all users, and it still works. Now I have no idea if this data is being cached or if it's just alive, you might say. So I'm going to set a breakpoint and test it out. Let's uh, close here, and I'm going to go back into my service. And a good place for a breakpoint would be right here where it says get all users. So any one of these lines, like 52 down to 56, would be a good spot for a breakpoint. So let's put one right here on 53. Okay, so with a breakpoint on 53, this should stop whenever the uh, service gets here. So I'm going to run the application again. All right, so the service is up and running again. So now I'm going to try this get all users and sure enough the application stops so just where I told the breakpoint now I'm going to continue on so I'm going to click the continue button and uh, there it is okay so it's it's now up and running now what would happen if I refresh this you would expect that the breakpoint would come back here and would uh, stop again but it appears that this execution never occurs it never gets to this place so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to keep clicking here, but I'm going to pause for 60 seconds and let's see if after 60 seconds the breakpoint will re-trigger again. Because right now, every time I click the browser, it just keeps redisplaying this data. So my assumption is that this data is in the memory of the uh, cache and it doesn't need to go back to the original function to get my uh, all users. Okay, I paused the video and waited about a minute. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to push the refresh button, and sure enough, the program stopped, and you can see that where the yellow line here says, we're getting a new set of users. So after a minute passes, this program now is triggered again, this method here. And so if I were to continue again, and the browser pops back up, now when I start refreshing, uh, the uh, cache is now in action. So this is demonstrating that there is a cache that's working, and the data here is not getting retrieved from its original source, going back to this uh, user DTO. Instead, it's being just uh, stored in the web server. So when we're doing caching with the WCF, we are pretty much doing all of our configuration on these lines right here in the config file. And then there was only one other line that we had to do, which was mention the profile name here in our interface. And so that's how you would set up a caching uh, service for your WCF REST service.